Hi everyone, this is Dana Dunn, your hostess for Women with Passion and Purpose, where we feature real women with real passion who have real purpose. And it's been a little while since we had one of our webinars, a few weeks, and I'm very excited to be bringing you our guest speaker tonight, Vivian McDonald. She is actually not only a professional acquaintance of mine, but she's become a terrific friend as well, and also has been a member of Women with Passion and Purpose since we began last fall. Vivian, welcome to the call. Thanks, Dana. Thank you. Well, I'm going to share with everyone just a little bit about you. Um, kind of toot your horn for a little bit, if I may. <laughs> Give you a little bit about your background and some bio information. Um, so I'm just going to share with you a little bit more about her and her background. So first of all, as I mentioned, she's been a member of Women with Passion and Purpose for quite a while now. And we've, we've developed a great professional relationship but also a wonderful friendship. And I just, she's just a tremendous woman. I'm just so thrilled to have her as a guest speaker. First of all, because I'm really passionate about what it is that she's doing. When I first learned of her business, I just, I'd never heard of a business offering like this before. And I think it's, it's very, very important. So again, very excited to share her with all of you. So just to give you an idea about her background, she lives on, on the beautiful Mornington Peninsula in Victoria, Australia. She has worked in all sorts of office roles since 1972, and during that time, in all the different roles she's had, she used computers. In every workplace, Viv was definitely the go-to person for workmates and her peers to get help. Obviously, that's where her passion had first begun. Viv also worked with older people, both in Falls Preventions, in a Falls Preventions Clinic and a community services center for vision impaired people. She has seen firsthand how using technology can make a huge difference in people's lives. After the birth of her second son, Viv decided to start a secretarial service, which by the way, won two Australian Achiever Awards. Definitely something to, uh, to rave about. And during this time, Viv realized that an extension of the service of writing letters to local MPs, etc., was to re really visit retirement villages where she could reach more people. Hence was the inception of her Web on Wheels business. So that's where the Web on Wheels was born. So with this business, most of her older clients really did want to learn, actually did want to use their own computer um, so really the tuition arm of Web on Wheels was first formed. So Viv, I know that was kind of a quick run through, but if you could share with us just a little bit more about, obviously I know this is a, a huge passion of yours, but if you could yes. share with us a little bit more about how you really took this and ran with it. Well, I actually didn't run with it, to be perfectly honest. It was something that I, I really, really wanted to do, and I thought, oh, should I, could I, <laughs> will I? And um, you know, one of those ideas that just sits and it just won't go away and then one day I just thought, oh, I have to do it because it's just still there and it's still burning in me. So, um, And it was, there's a, a particular person who he sort of kept coming into mind and, and it was before I actually started the Web on Wheels and, and I did help him with his computer and he was just so grateful and so happy to be able to talk to people um, and particularly his family members and I just kept sort of hooking into that feeling that, that I got from him being so excited. I thought, oh, I really have to share this with, with more, more and more people. So I guess that's where you know, just came from Bruce really um, it just evolved from there and um, yeah the passion still hasn't gone because I just I really I just so want the older people to just get over the hump of that difficult first stage and once they grasp this technology there's so much benefit they can get from it mm. this, you know, keeping in touch with people and keeping independent and get, get, getting out of bed in the morning and having something to do and to be interested in and, and be excited about it just still fires me up. <laughs> oh, and that's that's really so obvious. I mean, I, I've got that, I mean, every time we've spoken about your business, I just, that, that passion really does burn very deep within you. And, you know, when mm. you hear that someone starts getting really excited and it's something that they really want to learn, it, it gives you great pleasure to know that you have the tools and resources that can help them achieve that. So I, I oh, know it's it drives you. 
It does. I mean, I feel a bit guilty sometimes because I get such a kick out of being there and, and just knowing that, you know, I did it for them. I sort of think, oh, <laughs> and you're paying me for this. I know. Me, I'm sorry. It's, a, it's a business and it's a fantastic business model as well. So <laughs> our title today is Technology Can Be Your Friend. Now, do you find, I'm going to go on to, we have some great slides here we're going to be sharing with everybody. So I'm going to go on to your slide too. Now, so do you find people are scared of their computer and the fear I know is paralyzing, but do you feel that it, it starts at a particular age? Um, yes, yes and no. I, I think we all have a fear of the unknown of anything, but I guess when we're older we're just a bit more forthright and just determined. And I, But I do think that, especially for women, um, if they leave the, when they leave the workforce and they find there's this big world out there and um, you know, which step do I take next and if they don't have sort of immediate successes that's when I think their, um, their confidence does start to wane and then throw into that this oh you've got to learn a computer and just sit down and do this and, and they, they see this amazing thing that they've the whole concept of a computer is just so foreign to them mm -hmm. and if their confidence has waned a little and they think, oh, I can't learn this, oh it's all too scary and then all they hear is negative thoughts, they don't focus on the positive. Um, I do find, yes, that it is, um, I actually probably find actually saying that it's the 60 year bracket, 60 to 70 year bracket that seems to be more scared. Mm -hmm. The ones who are older are nervous but I don't know, sometimes they think, well I'm going to do it now or I'm never going to do it. So they probably have a little bit more of a steamroller effect um, which can sometimes help and sometimes hinder them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, certainly after 60 the, the confidence um, does go I think. So really at age 60 which is, is really kind of an important <coughs> especially nowadays, if that's an important age group between the 60s and 70s because the, the one thing that I feel when I first heard about your business was the, the paralyzation that older people must feel in today's technology. This is the only way people are really communicating anymore. That's so true. There's such a gap between like a 60-year-old trying to um, keep in touch with her grandson, that gap just gets wider and wider and wider as as the years going on with with technology um, sometimes being the only way to to bridge that gap because you know a, a grandmother talking to her grandson about the games he's playing or what music he's listening to is I mean yeah they're chasms <laughs> apart but at least with the technology there is a way to bridge it I mean she can send him an email and he'll quickly reply he, he may not instigate the email but he'll certainly send Nana a, an email back where he won't won't write her a letter absolutely well and you know and today most kids I mean they're born into the technology so they're engaging like a second language I mean or even a first language <laughs> As far as, even a first language yeah, as far as the emails and the computers and their video games I mean my, my kids can teach me a thing or two and I'm I'm getting pretty savvy when it comes to the internet but still there's just so much that you need to know and I know that it can really become overwhelming and daunting for older people so and daunting that's right and the trouble is that they hear about all these things and think that they have to do all these things well you don't mm -hmm. and just because there's a new piece of technology doesn't mean you have to have it or you have to use it or you have to use every feature of it a mobile telephone can you know just about walk and get your shopping for you but if you, all you want to do with the mobile phone is make a call and receive a call then that's absolutely fine. I think people feel a lot of pressure that they they should do this and they should do that. They hear all these shoulds and um, there's no should about it. It's just what works for you works for you. That's right. <laughs> just, we've just got to find a way to, to do just what you want to do. And But if you do want to do a task, let's find the easiest way to do that and, and um, you know, sort of take some pressure off and make it not hard work but enjoyable. And it's probably getting within your own comfort zone, starting with something small, getting used to it, like you said, setting up email and starting to engage and communicate via email and then move on from there. Yes, that is the general, yeah. Yeah, the communication is just really key. 
So with, with this program that you have, do you actually hold computer classes for the seniors? Oh, no. Um, one, I'm actually in a different sort of mindset to that. I think computer classes are great and they're very, very cost effective and if you are a confident person, I think they're, they're terrific. I've done many, many myself. But the, the people that I want to help, the ones that I want to reach out to, they have told me time and again that you know, they've gone to the community centre and they've sat there and all these people were asking all these questions and I thought I, should, I felt like I should have known this and I should have maybe put up my hand but I, oh, and they were all going ahead and I couldn't keep up and you know that's, so for my clients that I help, they're not comfortable to go into a classroom setting so I go into their home uh, or one of my coaches goes into their home so we help one on one and um, some people might just need one lesson to just give them a bit of confidence so that they know, okay, what I thought was right, I can move on and some people might need five or ten lessons or you know, anywhere in between. But so no, I don't do computer classes, it's all one-on-one -on -one in home. Gotcha, so actually the personalized approach, and that's kind of nice too because you're probably more over the shoulder being able to walk them through. Oh yes, I mean I, I do also do this via telephone and the internet. Um, I, I certainly have a nice long conversation with them over the phone first so they're comfortable with me and then we use this really nifty, very non-intrusive piece of software that they don't have to install or do anything tricky but I can essentially be looking over their shoulder. So um, we still talk on the telephone and then I guide them and I move their mouse and then show them something and then ask them to do the same thing or to go on so it's just, it, it's almost the same as being there but yeah it's definitely very personalized and one-on-one -on -one. or two it's actually really good if people can buddy up and um, have a husband and wife or two girlfriends or something just um, it's it's amazing how much one person will remember something and the other um, will remember something else and yet yeah, put two, two heads together it, it, it actually works really well sometimes. Now that must be, I know the very first time that I had somebody access my computer remotely, it was the most interesting thing to watch somebody take over my screen and move the mouse. They must just be in awe when <laughs> you start doing they that. They are, they are, but one thing I make very sure of is that um, I do have that first conversation away from the computer so we just talk on the phone so that they're comfortable and they know that I'm not just going to barge in there and you know zoom around and you know do anything nasty or, or confuse them so um, but they do they, they they when we do get to do that remote session oh I can't believe you're doing it oh, oh really <laughs> It's just, I mean, I, I still remember the, the same thing the first time it happened for me too. <laughs> this is, it's astonishing. Yeah, the good side of technology, it's just, it really is astonishing. It absolutely <laughs> and, you know, is. I'm someone in London and I can be just sitting here and, and just, you know, they need their, as what happened a couple of weeks ago, they, they couldn't print. It's one of the examples later and they couldn't print and, and, and they've tried everything with them, turn their printer off and every time it turns on it, you know, it just won't print, everything's all mapped up and so <laughs> literally it took 30 seconds after we'd had our you know, conversation, I logged in and then I showed her and, and, I, and I actually got her to do the steps that I, um, because I could see her computer and see exactly what was on screen, I knew what to do and she was, she was pretty okay with her computer, she, um, so she was quite comfortable to follow my instructions. So I said, now we're going to you know, click here, now see that thing there on the very first line and it says error, click on that, now press your delete key and she did and then lo and behold everything else started printing and she was just beside herself and, oh and, you know, and the whole thing took 10 minutes and, and she was done and yeah she's on the other side of the globe. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? I mean I just love this, this part of technology and the neat thing is is with these people feeling like they're so frustrated. I know when I get hung up with a computer problem sometimes you just want to take it and throw it right out the window. I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> for, so for an older person, how frustrating that is, and for somebody else to be able to take the controls and say, you know, by the way, did you try this, did you try this, and mm. for you to be able to solve that problem for them, it, it really empowers them. 
And it does. And these things are the little things in increments that boost their confidence. So they say, okay, I've done that. I know where to find that. If that happens again, I can sort that problem out. I'm not going to throw the computer out. I, I, I can figure this out. And um, bit by bit by bit, yes, they will, they will increase their confidence. Wow, that is just so so awesome. It brings a smile to my face every time I think about what it is that you do for them. So let me ask you then, so who really are the people that you help overall? I mean, I understand that you, you know, go to some of the individuals' homes, but, but overall, who is it that you're really helping? Overall, it's, um, yeah, older people, 50 mm -hmm. plus, both men and women, okay. who... Um, who need help with the computer, who do need just that confidence boost, as I say, to get over that first hurdle. Um, they're the, the people who, some, they may not necessarily have tried uh, computer classes or bought books or, <laughs> or um, sorry, I was just thinking of the next thing I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> they, um, that, but they've stumbled and so they're ready for some help, they're ready for some hand holding. And so I was just thinking about again, you know, things that have happened to my clients, they, the, the people who ring me up, <laughs> uh, very well-meaning relatives often say, okay mum, here's my old computer, I've had us upgrade it, we've just, you know, Ben's just hooked it up for you and this is how you send an email, so um, I'll send you an email tomorrow and, and um, you know, we can be in contact. So, see ya, and, out, and they walk out the door. <laughs> and poor old Betty sits and says, yeah, okay, I saw that. And then tomorrow she goes to turn on her computer and says, oh, jeez, how did on earth, where did, how did I get that, what was that email? And it's just a haze and a blur and a, it's fog to them because, you know, these poor people, it's one of the reasons that I, keep striving to, to make this business what I want it to be because I just admire them so much that, that they are in this fog, they are scared and they've got to learn computer language, <laughs> what computer terms are, they've got to look at, learn how to look on a screen and see the bombardment of things that they first are confronted with, they've got to learn how to use this silly old mouse which doesn't make sense to them and especially older people sometimes, you know, they're um, sensory um, abilities are, are depleted when, when they get older, they, they can't, their t sense of touch isn't what it used to be and sometimes they get tremors and you know, it can, actually can be really difficult to use a mouse and, and yet they're just expected, just click here now, double click there and right click here and, <laughs> and it can be hard it, when you've just got all this stuff thrust at you all at once. So Absolutely. they're the people, the people like Betty who just have this thing thrust at them and have a, a 30 second lesson and feel like, oh, I just can't get it. What am I going to do? So they're the people I help. And they're probably afraid if they do something wrong, they're going to break it. If they oh, yes. Technology oh. and they use it and they're so, not only they're afraid of it, but I think they're afraid to do something wrong too. That's right. And they've all heard horror stories. Oh, I deleted all my files and did this and did that. And, you know, when you explain, it's actually really hard to delete all your files since you have to go through a number of steps to actually do that. And computers nowadays are much, well, they're much, much more user friendly than the days of old when, you know, it was a lot easier to just delete everything. And, and like everything, when we're in that yeah, non-confident mode, Right. We focus on the negative because we're in sync with that. So they don't hear all the success stories and all the wonderful things. They just hear, this happened to so-and-so and, oh, I'm scared this might happen. And, um, yeah, they're just, <laughs> yeah, so got to get up and over that and um, just know, yes, this is a machine and the machine will be told what to do, <laughs> even if it has little glitches now and again. 99% of the time it will do what it's told. Well, and let's talk about, uh, you know, and, going into this whole thing because I know that we want to kind of talk about the kind of things that you really do to help them along the things, the questions that they have and their stumbling blocks. So I know we, on our next slide we have a few common dilemmas that they come across and if you want to just kind of go through those kind of quickly as to kind of what, what they're really looking for when they're looking to, to you know, really get your help in trying to understand things. Okay, well the first, um, well we've got on our common 
dilemmas here, the printer doesn't print anything. Well, that was exactly the case as what I helped the lady in, in London with. So um, it's a very easy thing for people like us who know how to find our way around a computer. But I, it, oh, go back. We just need to go back one. Um, what I try and do is not to, also not to say to them, this is how you fix it. We just say, okay, we've got a problem with our printer. Now, the computer has sections in it, all the parts that are hooked up to the computer and popped inside the computer, they all have their own little separate um, sort of station. So if there is a problem with a printer, and it's not simply a matter of taking the plug out, turning it off and on, or putting new paper in. Let's go into the section on the printer, and we can explore all the parts in there that might give us a clue as to what's wrong. Now, in this particular instance, the first thing we found was this big long queue of documents, and we unblocked the, the queue, and, and away it went. But there are other things, and sometimes it's simply a matter of um, going into the different options in the computer, in the printer, um, printer section and seeing that there's a little line say work offline and if you tick that it actually goes back working online and it will work again for some reason something's we, and it's not worth f tr sometimes trying to find out why <laughs> and sometimes little things happen and if we know to go and have a look around and exploring we can see this work offline is being ticked well that's not right because we actually do want to be working on it take the tick out and away we go so again mm -hmm. if, if they know where to go there's a place where they can find things out. If something happens next time, they can go and explore. And they may not necessarily break things, or there's nothing in there for them to, to delete or break or anything go wrong. They're just observing what if everything looks in order. So um, whilst we can fix one problem, it also helps with their confidence that down the track they might be able to fix another little glitch without actually having to call for help. Very good. Um, yeah, now I know this happened to lots of people. You say, oh, there's a website and you think, oh, I, I want to print out that little bit there on, um, you might be looking at going on holiday in France and you've, you've pulled up a web page or something really interesting and there's a couple of paragraphs and I know people like to look at things later or look at things on, on paper. So you might print, press print and, and away it goes and it might be a really, really long web page and it might print 14 pieces of paper where in fact you only wanted to read two paragraphs. Again I'll show people how all you need to do is just highlight that couple of paragraphs and that gives them quite a few lessons actually all in one when you show them how to you know click at the first part and then how to drag their mouse down and, and let go at the end of the second part and that it's highlighted. The computer knows it's going to do something with just that section and uh, when we go to the print dialog box, which I don't call it when I talk to them, but <laughs> when we go to the, the part where you can print it, um, because you've highlighted something, the printer knows you may well want to do something with just that part, so it actually gives you the option to print that selection. And you put click on that little button and it'll only print those two paragraphs. Again, you know, they've not wasted paper, they've learned something that they can, um, can do a hundred times in the future and they've also learned how to highlight and um, do something that's not just the stock standard default. And it's that, that control, you're giving them the control that they need. Yeah, that's right, not just, oh, I have to wait for 14 pages to print and I just wanted the last two paragraphs. I'll just have this now, I will do this and I will just print that. And it, again, it's really powerful confidence boosting for them. Absolutely, well, I can definitely understand that. Oh, this next little one, it gets everywhere. Even my husband, this happened to a few months ago. He rang me up and I'm typing away and everything I've typed just disappeared. <laughs> I've had that happen too. It's not a fun thing to have happen. It's not a fun thing to have happen and it's, that is frustrating when, especially if you um, you know, you, it, people who look, who, if, you read, if you look at your keyboard as you're typing, you don't actually notice what's up on screen and you may not look up for a minute or two <laughs> and everything you've typed before has all disappeared. That's really, really frustrating. So, um, and I explain to them about the insert key and the delete key and tell them to 
you know, press insert and away they go. But my favourite tip before I say just retype that, I explain to them about the wonderful Control Z function on the computer mm -hmm. and they Control Z a couple of times and everything that disappeared just comes back again. And um, that you is that? Really I, You just taught me something new. Control Z? Yeah. Control Z is the best thing. It's my present to everybody. I love <laughs> it. I get you that. out of so many things on websites. On if you're doing your accounting program and you um, you type something in here. Oh gee, I don't like that description. Control Z it undoes it. If you've type if you're typing in a word processing program like Microsoft Word or something like that. Um, you move your bullets around and you think, oh, no, I don't like that. Control Z undoes the last function that you did on almost every program, but it's not on every program, but it's certainly worth trying. If, if you've made a mistake or you don't like the last thing you did, Control Z and my many, many programs will keep letting you undo that last function back until the last save. So you can keep backtracking and backtracking and backtracking until you find what you were looking for or what went wrong or till your formatting looks the way you want it to be. It's just a marvellous thing. <laughs> Great. Well, gosh, thank you for that tip. <laughs> I will tell you how I, um, one thing I wish I'd known years ago, I, in a, another business I had, excuse me, it was a tile shop and we made hand-painted tiles and I had spent months making this beautiful catalogue with pictures of all the handmade tiles, details about everything, the sizes, the availability. Oh, it was just, it was oh, a sight to be sight behold, if I say so myself. <laughs> one night, very, very late at night, I was just doing something, I was tweaking something. And it was, it was 54 pages or something like that of this hard work that I'd spent months doing. And I looked away, answered a phone or something, and I turned back to my screen, and there was nothing there. Oh my gosh! And I look, and I looked down, and it said page one of one, and I knew I had fifty-four pages. And oh I, goodness. and I looked at the top, and the document name was still the same. And and this was when I wasn't very familiar with computers, so I didn't understand about finding. You know, uh, previous versions or temporary files, I just knew that my file had nothing was there and I I looked everywhere I could think of to <laughs> look in the computer and I in the end had to redo it because I didn't, if I had accidentally done a control A to select everything and must have pressed the space bar or something, the whole thing disappeared. Mm -hmm. and if I'd just gone control Z, the entire thing would have been back. Oh. <laughs> so I you love control Z. You redid all 54 pages? I had to. Oh my goodness. I, had to. I mean I had a hard copy to, to follow and I knew what I'd done but I had to redo it because I didn't know. I, I couldn't find it so I had to redo it. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. There's all kinds of little shortcuts and tools that's, you know, it's amazing that, you know, somebody, I would have, I, and you probably did, I would go on a major panic attack. Oh yeah, and I did. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I was too scared to turn the computer off because oh, you know, there was no chance to get it back. Then I thought maybe if I turn it back on, it'll magically be there. But you know, it was certainly in the oh, yeah. days I'm before auto recovery. <laughs> we have the magic wand above the computer and just hope that everything turns out okay. Yeah, so now, how, that's right. How about this one? How about the one where obviously we're talking about Grandma here or Nana? She wants to see her grandson's photos. How? Where is she kind of getting hung up? Yeah, where she's getting hung up is she knows that they're on an email somewhere, but she, she can see her email from her daughter and says, Hi, Mum, here's photos of Andrew you know, taking his first steps or whatever it may be, and she can't see any photos. And for us who you know to look for the attachment or to look for a paper clip, it's, just, it's easy. But when you don't know what you're looking at and when you see an email screen and if there's so many words and options and buttons, yeah. it's just... It's really, it is daunting because, and confusing. So as we know, once they know, we say, okay, there's an attachment. To see if there's an attachment, you see if there's a paper clip. 
Now I'll show you how to double click on the paper clip and then you'll see where the, the photos are all listed. You know, they may have the child's name or they may just be numbers, but they'll end with this JPG. All those JPG files, they're always photos. So we'll get one of those and we'll tell the computer we want to look at it. So we double click it and voila, there's a photo of your grandson. But without knowing those steps, without knowing that a paper clip actually happens to be an attachment to a file that is a photo. You know, it's, it, it, there's a long string of things there, um, of assumptions there. But now that um, the, the grandmother knows that's how the photos are going to come, next time she'll quite easily go there and double click away and, and see the photos. But that's happened to many people. They've, they've, oh, they've sent me something and I don't know how to find it. Mm -hmm. Well, they, sc they scroll down to the bottom of the email and they're looking and it, it's, they don't see any pictures. Where's the pictures? Where's the pictures? They expected to see them in the email. That's right. And, and that's, I mean, and the daughter said, I've sent you an email with the photos of Andrew. Well, there's the email. <laughs> you know, you're that's looking right. in the email message, so why aren't the photos there? I mean, yeah. <laughs> And you know, it depends, on, it depends on the email service that you're using as well too, on how they're going, where you're going to go look for the attachments as well. That's right. I mean, and some of them do strip them out and actually insert them in, and some of them do just files, and some of them won't even let you um, get the attachments until you say that person's okay. So there's all there are lots of little foibles in all the different programs that are available, and that, that and that's another thing that causes confusion because if you've got different operating systems and different programs, everything's not quite the same as everybody else's. So, right. <laughs> yeah, And they could be trying that. to give you instruction over the phone and tell you how to find them, but if it's different, it's not going to be the same. That's right, exactly. If they've got an XP machine and they've got Hotmail, it's different to Windows the Vista that's you know, got Outlook on it. So, yeah, it can be so how about the update message? Oh yes, well we often see these, you know, Windows Update or Java Update or Adobe and um, because they've heard that, and rightly so in this case, that you should always be wary about um, programs wanting to do something on your computer, because they might have said, oh okay, I'll press on that and then they get the security update from their computer saying, this program is trying to do something on your computer. Do you give it permission? And they're like, oh, oh no, and they cancel. <laughs> okay, well, I won't do that. I nearly did something wrong. Um, I try and give people a list of the reputable people that they know as, you know, obviously, you know, the Microsoft updates and the Adobe's and people like that. But there are some programs in their own computer that they may have bought or been given or the computer's been given to them by somebody else and it's got, you know, some, um, particular program in there that, that needs to be updated. So I just explained to them what the update is, that very clever people out there make these very clever programs and they all think they're better than somebody else and they're always tweaking and they always want to do something yeah, better than their competitor does so they put out a new feature. But for that feature to be able to work on their own computer, they have to get that updated information transferred from that company's website into their computer and then onto that program. So the update um, function does that for them. They don't have to do anything rather than other than just press a OK, please update this button and give the computer permission to do it. But it does scare a lot of people. Um, but I do say if in doubt I'm really much happier if you ring me or email me or something to just to be sure. But you can be sure if it's Microsoft um, updates. You really do need those because most of the time they're security patches and the the reputable pe people that you probably know. You know, if you've opened files, you might have noticed that there's Adobe. Well, yes, you definitely need all the updated versions and that, so you can get the um, the newest version and the better running version and the ones where they've tried iron out all the bumps that <laughs> inevitably happens. So just explain to them what the whole update process is and um, who are the definite yeses you can go right ahead and, and update and um, call me if you're, if you're still in doubt. Right. Yeah, and I can imagine where they hear all these, you know, horror stories of people, you know, the phishing and, um, you yes. know, these little pop-up things that they get. But it, as long as you've kind of educated them and tell them, I mean, they're not always bad. So just to kind of look for the 
the ones that they know to expect, like you said, Adobe or Windows, that there are important security patches that they do want to download. So that's that's important. So how about the the key now? The, how do how do they find their files? Well, um, <laughs> that can be that can be a very messy one. <laughs> I can imagine. And I inevitably have to go and have a look at their computer, either virtually or or in home, because if people do type letters or they get their digital um, photos in their computer, they just stick them in any old where and <laughs> they either have this big long list of hundreds of <laughs> photos and documents and things or they truly don't know where they are because when they were on a screen they didn't notice that it was in, you know, whether it may not have been in my documents, but it might have been on the desktop or something, or it might have been on C drive, and their my documents doesn't look at that when they they go to find it, and and um yeah, <laughs> that can be a really it can be a really classic thing, and that's that's an education in, in itself, um, and a big lesson in itself, and explaining about you know the filing cabinet and the suspension files are very very similar analogy to the, the folders in, in Windows and we explain where, where things are and once we do explain somewhat about the filing system, we then go exploring to find out where their files have disappeared to. We check the defaults and a lot of people don't realise that, for instance, in Microsoft Word, the, the, um, the files, there is a default section where, they, where if you don't tell it specifically where to put so it'll go to this one particular place. Well, this one particular place it decided to pop things through might be of no logical place to you, and so you'd never go to look there. So we go and you know just do little tweaks like that. So if you if you haven't told it somewhere else, it's going to go into um, into yeah, my documents and into my recipes file because that's the only thing I do. I type up recipes, so it's going to go in that file unless I tell it somewhere else, and then they don't. They know where to find it <laughs> next That's time. So, yeah, we just um, yeah, finding files can be yeah, <laughs> been a can of worms oh. there. <laughs> well, I've done that before. If I if I don't pay close attention to where the default is going to download it. I've had to search and that's not fun sometimes. Yes, that's not fun and and you know, at least with Vista it's much 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 easier to find things, but trying to use the the search function to find things can be you know, hopeless too so uh, yeah it, it, try and get it right from the beginning and then it's plain sailing after that <laughs> oh absolutely well let's let me ask you do you have specific examples because I know just because you've shared with me personally a few of the, of the clients that you really helped and what a tremendous difference it made for them not only just because they were able to learn something new but really how they were able to communicate with family members you want to take a couple minutes, I'll go to the next slide, but you want to take a couple minutes and just share with us some specifics of, you know, kind of some success stories? Oh, okay then. Um, well, yes, there's been a few. Um, what's some nice ones to share? Um, one of them is actually my uncle, and I'm sure he won't mind me sharing <laughs> this with him, but he um, has a son in America who he hadn't seen for quite some time, and um, he finally took the plunge and got his computer and didn't hurl it through the windows. He was very, very, very <laughs> tempted to so many times, and um, got the webcam all sorted out. And he ended up um, using Skype. And his son was very computer savvy, so he was fine. And they um, worked out a time when they would meet on the on the internet, and um, and they did. So they used their webcams. They used Skype. It was all free, of course, because it's on the internet, and clicked on a button and he saw his son in America and his grandson, oh. Oh. and who he'd never met before, and they could see each other and have this wonderful face-to-face. -face. They did it full screen so they could see you know, a big picture of each other, and there they, are, there they are, and all in real time, no delay, no DVD or anything, it's all real right there in front of them. So yeah, they, there's been quite a few of those. I've got another mm -hmm. uh, lovely couple down in um, Mount Martha here on our Mornington Peninsula and um, their son travelled to Canada um, about five years earlier and they'd also had a, had a daughter and so just 
we just got a, a $60 webcam from Officeworks, went home, plugged it in, made a Skype account, yeah. clicked on the button, ah, there was a grandson, a granddaughter, mm -hmm. I should say, and yeah, it's just, it's so lovely to keep in contact with people and see, and you know, many people tell me about that, um, you know, they're able to see their grandchildren grow up, they may be in London and, and they here in Melbourne, but they can see them and they can show them their little pieces of art that they did at kindergarten and they can, you know, stand there in their in their school uniform or, you know, read them a story or whatever it might be. It's just communicating, being in touch with people. It's just such a big, big plus for the internet. And that's real time connections. I mean that's who gosh, who wants to get it? Getting letters and cards in the mail is really exciting too, but Gosh, it's yes. more exciting to get the real time right in front of you, almost that you could reach out and just hug them. That's exactly right. You can almost reach out and touch them. It's just, of course, it's never going to substitute for being there. But if you're on the other side of the globe, or you know, gee, even with my mum and dad, up, we're still in the same state, but we don't see each other very often. But you can do this sort of thing and um, and be in contact with each other. It is the next best thing. Well, and I can tell you, my, my, my mother is now in her 70s, and, you know, I was telling her, you know, gosh, I just got my webcam, and, and you know, and I should have had one a long time ago, but I got mine, and so next thing I know, I showed her one day while she was here, I sat her down on my computer, got her used to kind of seeing what it looked like, well, next thing I'm, I talked to her, probably two days later, and I said, what are you doing? She goes, I'm installing my new webcam. Oh, lovely. <laughs> she said, we can actually, instead of just talking on the phone, we can just, we can have a face-to-face -face conversation. And I thought, that is just so cool. That is just so That's right. It is so neat, yes. It really is. You have a face-to-face. -face. I mean, phone's great. Letters are wonderful. But, yeah, nothing like seeing an expression on someone's face or, and... Yeah. And anyway, if you're having a bad hair day with someone or you haven't got your makeup on, you're not up to it, well, you just answer with the audio only or put a cover over your yeah, there you <laughs> <go. webcam lens. laughs> You don't always have to. That's another thing too. People think, oh, no, everyone's going to see me. No, no, you only activate it when you want to or that's you right. turn it off or you just don't answer with the video. There's, you know, you just, it's entirely up to you. You are in charge of, of how that works. Right. Okay, so let's look at this. Now, this, I, for whatever reason, the computer just wants to keep taking, um, if I'm paused too long on one screen, it decides it wants to do something else. Okay, so <laughs> let's talk about the ways to use the computer. These are the ways that you're actually sharing with some of these seniors and people that are a little bit more challenged on how actually to use the computer. So we'll kind of go through those kind of quickly and just kind of, if you could, give us a brief overview. Oh, uh, sure. Um, well, actually, I've just covered the first one. <laughs> Using the webcam, and yeah, you do. You see and hear your loved ones on on your computer screen. Um, special occasions, every day, whatever it is. Um, shopping online. Now, I know people are really nervous about shopping online. They've heard all sorts of horror stories, but there are so many advantages. And I say to people, if you use the internet wisely, if you go to a website. Make sure that it's a reputable company. Make sure when you're going to pay that you make sure it's a secure site and I show people how to either look for the gold padlock or look for the S in the, the, the HTTPS so that they know that it's secure. Um, use only a, a, a Visa card or a MasterCard. Um, those, all those companies want people to shop with them. They want to make it as good and secure an ex experience as possible. So they are doing their level best to make sure it is secure. So they've got everything in place. Now, if something goes wrong, what they have in place isn't sufficient. So it's not up to you as the individual to, to combat all that. It's up to them as the company providing this service to look after you. So they, most of them will say that if you shop at a reputable place, if you've been sure that it's a, a secure site, if you're using a, a MasterCard or a Visa card, uh, and if something goes wrong and you let them know straight away, you won't be liable for any losses. Mm -hmm. And the advantage of shopping online is I, as people get older, I either you know, get frail or can't be bothered with the shops or run out of time or it just lots of times there are physical restrictions on getting to shops. Well, with literally millions of websites available on the internet selling products from 
all over the world, you can choose a wonderful gift for someone. You might have a niece who um, you want to send a 21st birthday present to. You, you can shop for something fabulous. You can have it, pay for it, have it gift wrapped and sent to her door without you even leaving your home. Um, I know, again, for much older clients who, who do become frail, they they are loath to keep asking their daughter or son, can you please come and you know come on Thursday and we'll go and do the shopping and take me here and they, they feel like a burden or a, right. it's an imposition sometimes and whilst most um, sons and daughters are only too happy to help mum or dad, it still is difficult for a lot of people to, to make the time to, to go every week to do the shopping whereas if you can shop online, you can look up and down all those supermarket shelves choose the products you want, pay for it, and the man will deliver it. <laughs> It'll even bring it, the food right into your kitchen. Save you getting in your car, battling down to the shops and wheeling one of those three-legged trolleys down the aisle and you know, carting all your shopping back home. And you know, It might be a stinking hot day or a really rainy day. Um, you, you can do your shopping and um, yeah, take away all that hassle. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big proponent for that. Um, I've just got discover all there is to know about anything. Well, it is the internet is the world's biggest library. So anything you want to know about anything is there. Now some of the information you might have to pay for, but gee, a good portion of that information is free. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look around, somebody will know something about something, and you you might have to spend a bit of time but you'll find what you're looking for there's no doubt about it so um yeah anything you want to know health or yeah rose pruning or i had one on looked at a site the other day on cluster balloons these people have these helium balloons and fly like <laughs> these cluster balloons they show you how to make them and what to do and all the science behind it so yeah oh anything about anything you can find out um and the next one is your family tree. I know a lot of people are very, very interested in, in doing the family tree and, you know, unfortunately as we get older, um, we lose members of our family who have all this wonderful information. Um, so people feel a need as they get older to, to get this done and um, there's many, many, many wonderful websites um, where you can um, go to. They're free and paid services again there. Um, but I know when people start it's such a, a discovery for them to to find out information about family members in the past and uh, yeah, when they have their family meetings, oh did you know that so and so is this and this and he came from there and <laughs> it's, just, it's a really, really great thing to do for a lot of people. Keeps a lot of people busy too, really busy and, and enthralled. And and then it leads on to to conversations mm -hmm. and to you know something of interest. So it's not just sitting gawking at your computer screen. It's it's ways again. It's ways to engage people. But when it's all within your family, there's something really wonderful about finding out about your past, where you came from, and that's a and I would that's a really big thing. Yeah, and I would think with this age group, this would be something that they would love to be able to do at, at any age group. But you find, you know, as you get a little bit older, and like you said, there's certain family members that hold this treasure of family information that maybe are no longer with us. And it's like, well, how do you go, how do you go back and research the family yes. branches? And they definitely can do that. I know several family members personally right now that are right doing this. That's why I was, I was thrilled when I saw that because that's, that's a very powerful tool for the seniors. And isn't it important to them? They just feel, yeah, they're, they're contributing to, to the, the knowledge within their family and it's a, it's a great, great, great thing to do. Mm, yes. <laughs> and they can also, um, I see this, they can take courses. Yes, doing an e-course at home. Oh, yes, of course, <laughs> going on anything. You can do motor mechanics or cookery or get a university degree. Um, there are so many courses that you don't need to go to on campus to, to study. I mean, they can be simple, quick and easy five-minute courses or they can be full-length university courses. Um, you can learn all you know health and nutrition and science and all of oh, geez all sorts of things and there are 
quirky little subjects to learn and there are things like you can learn about your, your digital camera and learn all the ins and outs of your camera and how to take the best photos and do a full on photography course um, and do it at a time in a place that suits you. So if you're a night owl, you can turn your computer on 11 o'clock and do a couple of hours if you like and uh, not disturbing anybody. I don't think the, um, the, the faculty would be too happy about opening their doors at 11 o'clock, but yeah. being as it's on your own computer, you can just turn up when you like. That's right. And you can, yeah, you can do a little bit every day or, as most of us want to do, do a whole bunch all at once. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And the next one I really like because it, you can take a look inside your hotel room if someone's going to travel. And I can tell you because my grandmother, before she passed away, before she was going to make a, a, her one of her last travels, we were able, she was very against computers to begin with. Now, mind you, she was over 90 years old. But when we, hmm. we were able to show her pictures, and they actually had like a, a virtual tour so you could actually turn it at 360 degrees. Yes. And, you could look around the room, and she she started laughing, and she said, "I feel like I'm already there." Mm -hmm. It felt like she was in the room, and she was she was walking around the room. So these are just so powerful, and it is so exciting to see these older people get so excited about you know the technology. Yes, that's right. The good side of technology. Yeah, okay, there's bad stuff, but steer away yeah, from that. And yes. You've got all this positive stuff. That's right. And she could see, she could visualize. Seeing a pamphlet's great, but you. You to actually see and do that 3D tour oh, is wow. just, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's marvellous. You think, oh yeah, I can, I can see that and check out the local um, attractions and uh, get a feel for things. And well, one thing, I'm just paused on local attractions, one thing I really like to do, I, um, I'm not keen on driving somewhere for the first time and bit nervous about, you know, what am I looking for? What I generally always do is do a search on the address where I'm going to. I either plan the whole trip out, but where my destination, I always get a street view. Um, I won't go into which programs or anything, but there's lots and lots and lots to, to use. Mm -hmm. But I have a look at the outside of the building or the you know, a local landmark or what the intersection looks like so that I know what I'm going to be looking for. So I'm not in a busy road full of traffic going, where was that? Oh, what was that hotel look like? I wonder what the writing looks like. If I've already seen it, I'm somewhat familiar. And as soon as I'm driving down, I'll just, oh, there it is. And in I go. Takes a lot of hassle out of things. And, there, and there's so much familiarity when you have when you have that picture because you, you can see the whole street view. So it's yes. not like you're just looking for a building that you can see maybe on a hotel site or something else, but you actually have the street view so you know your bearings, little landmarks to look for. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's very handy. So let's talk well, the last about, one on yeah. So let's talk about this last one here that I know is very special for some some older people that really want to be able to like we we're talking before about being able to share the family tree. I love this one. They can write their mm. life story. Uh, and that and it is. It's just wonderful. And you know, some people just do a, a real brief, you know five pages about you know their life but other people can you know write books and um, just telling stories about their youth and growing up and their their thoughts and perceptions and um, they're not likely sometimes not likely to sit down and tell, regale everybody with all their little stories that they remember but over time if you're writing your story and you're using your computer to just add to bit by bit by bit um, it's, it's, I mean, it's just such a great tool to do that. And in the end, you, some people can do this whole thing themselves and format it and make it look great, or they can just take their words and have it taken to somewhere where they can put it into a really beautiful form and gee, print it if they wish to. I do have a, a client who's done that. Um, she's, she's done about 12 copies for her family and she's had them um, bound beautifully and presented them to her family and, and they have no idea some of the things she got up to when she was young. <laughs> that, that woman, she, she, yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure out. that's a, that's, and, and, give, and with the beauty of using a computer, you don't have to remember everything today. You can right. just go back and then you think, oh, I remember that. 
go back to the computer, get your document and add that little bit that you just remembered that you hadn't thought of in 10 years. And you know, it's just, yeah, it's a great tool <laughs> and, and you can get just a marvellous, marvellous um, end result of, of having, having a story to share with your family or the world. Yeah, what a wonderful gift to be able to give your family. I mean, I, I know that people write their memoirs and they do these things, but really, to, to especially if it's an older person maybe that is not really a typist and they really want to, you know, have someone else do it for them. But what mm. a wonderful gift, like you were saying, that she gave away 12 copies. That's, yes. that is, that's a gift that will last you a lifetime and then some. It's a le leaving a legacy behind for the, for the next generation behind you. I believe so. This she's a very interesting woman. This will be handed down through Aww. through the, the generations. Just gorgeous. And so, just one thing on that. Again, using technology, if they're not a typist, they can always um, record this. Use a, a little. Um, you can get little cheap recorders, and you can have a service that transcribes it for you, or you can get a a, a service on your uh, um, sorry a program on your computer that can even. Um, translate those words to text. You know, it depends on how far you want to go and what, and what you need. There, yeah. there is usually a, a solution for all problems with technology. So, yeah, it's not just restricted to sitting down typing it all yourself. Well, now I know that we discussed a little bit earlier. I know that you've got some, some things coming up that I don't know if you want to take a moment and share. I don't even know all the details to what it is that you're working on, but I know <laughs> that you've been a little bit busy working on something. Do you hear <laughs> what you've been up to? Oh well, yes. For our, well, I have a members website. So uh, we, what that is is we help people one on one in their home. We also have either the ongoing support with this website, or some people just have that, um, where we have tips and hints and newsletters and all sorts of things. We've just finished our first members program which was uh, Getting to Know My Computer series. So we take very simply straightforward with pictures and nice clear explanations of the computer for this one, the outside of the box, the inside of the box, what the bits do, what, how they might affect us. Um, very straightforward and so now I'm working on the other programs that are coming up which will explain about the internet and email and how all that works and um, digital cameras and some people like to know about eBay so we're doing specific programs or specific topics for our members. And the other very time consuming, <laughs> exciting thing is um, hoping to launch it in time for our Mother's Day here in Australia is it's called Tech Terms Untangled and it's a book and it's a, all these technical terms that people come across. It's a definition of that, a nice plain English straightforward definition but at the back is a glossary um, and it, each term has uh, either an explanation or an illustration or an example of where to find it in your computer or an example of how you might use this. Um, it just yeah, it elaborates on just the uh, a definition. But I know lots of people get stumped by this stupid terminology, <laughs> Techn oh, I know. all this technical jargon which we are uh, lumbered with. We have no choice in. And so this is it's exactly it's just a plain English translation of those technical terms. Now, is this is this going to be a book that's offered to your members? Is this going to be a book that's offered to the general public or? Oh, it's going to be offered to the general public. And I've decided to do a hard cover book, a, a, a book that they can, people can hold in their hands rather than doing it electronically because, of course, most of the people that I first um, come across don't know, even know how to use their computer and certainly wouldn't know how to download an e-book. So this is going to be a physical book and they can flick through the pages and find what they're looking for. There's places to write notes, but it, it will be available to everybody anywhere. I haven't got the prices or any availability or anything yet. I've, I'm still finishing it off, but um, it will be available to anybody and, and they can just ring me up or email me and um, I'll, I'll let them know when it becomes available if someone's interested or wants to find out more. Oh, fantastic, because I know that that would be whether it even is for Mother's Day or even a birthday gift or even coming up, you know, towards the fall and, and winter again here in the U.S. for Christmas and holidays. It, that sounds like a great gift to be able to give someone, especially a family member. 
Now, yes. so that, that would lead me to ask you, so obviously we know that you're in Australia. So is your services restricted to a certain geographic area? Do you, I know that you have a membership site, so I would assume that you're open globally, internationally, is that true? Yes, that's right. And that's, that's one of the reasons I have the membership site, because whilst I can do the remote session, sometimes it's still not practical. So we do have the membership site, and um, that, of course, is open to anybody in the world, wherever they may be. Um, but I do also have these remote sessions, as I was explaining before about the, the lady in London and a couple of other people I've done who are elsewhere. They, you can, with the technology, you can be anywhere in the world. And I am growing the, um, the coaches that I'm having. So um, over time, I'll have coaches all over the place. So. Um, no, I'm not restricted to just here. I certainly service just my very local area, but I have coaches who do other areas, and we've got the online um, group, our, our, our online community, um, which, yeah, anybody can be anywhere in the world. Fantastic. Well, let me ask you, do you have any special tips that you want to share with us on how an older person who's new to computers can really learn to like it because we know that their fears you know they you know anytime you're fearful of something or you start something new whether it's a new job or you know a new business or anything new for that matter there's always the fears that come into play so do you have any tips on really trying to get them to like it we kind of like the learning process well that is exactly what you said I mean it, it, anything that's new to anybody it's new and it's daunting and it's confusing and you, you know, we all learned to drive a car and we certainly didn't know how to drive 100 kilometres down a road or do reverse parking on our first day. So you've got to be gentle with yourself and don't expect that you're going to learn everything the first day. Really, just um, it is okay to be unsure and it's really important to ask questions because that's how you'll learn. Um, don't expect you're going to be an expert. And uh, yeah, sit back, take a breath, and um, if it all seems too hard, go make a cup of tea, come back, <laughs> and it'll, it will probably seem better, and just ask for help if you need it. But just know that um, everybody starts not knowing, and it just takes time, and it does take some practice. You, we, we as human beings, I mean, the way our brains function, we we just have to learn, we have to do something um, repetitive to it for it to be embedded in our, in our memory, in our brain cells. They've got to make those neural pathways and all that stuff they talk about. But essentially it means that we've got to do something more than once for us to remember it. So you do need to do something three, four, five, six, seven, eight times before you remember it. So just know it's not just you, it's, it's a human brain, it's the way it works. So. Right. Fantastic. Well, I know, and I've gone to the next slide for you. I know that it's, it's part of it as far as the, t the top five tips to start smiling at your computer. It makes you smile just <laughs> since reading the title. We really kind of just briefly went over step one, but let's go through two through five. Okay, so um, getting to know my computer series, it is free, and I can post that to anybody, anywhere, if they like, um, or if anybody is on email, they can I can email it to them. And that does take some of the mystery out of the computer because it's this really foreign thing that sits on their floor or on their desk if they've got a, a laptop and you've no idea what's going on in there and it makes these noises and it's just yeah. very foreign concept. So this um, series is it was made so that it just takes some of the mystery out of it. It just shows you it's a machine, it's made out of parts, and you put this bit here and that bit works there, <laughs> and that cools that down and that's about it, really. Um, so, yeah, that, if anybody would like a copy of that, I'm happy to send that out. I think that, that helps get some of the, take some of the mystery away. Definitely. And uh, point number three, I, I really like to do this just to, to have a special book or a notepad or something that every time you come across a problem, write it in this same place, in this same piece of paper. There's, very often you'll find that a, a problem in some, that you're doing in some particular place is a very, very similar problem that you might have encountered somewhere else. Now, once you get the um, solution or the explanation to the first problem, you'll, if you look through your 
your list, you'll say, oh yeah, now I see how that works there. Ah, oh, okay. And tick off those successes. When you've, when you've had a problem and it's been a problem and you've sorted it out, put a beautiful big purple tick through it. It's, uh, it's very, it's very um, great when you can see, look back at that list and see tick, 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 and only a couple of blank spaces. And if you've got, if you write those little notes in, in just one place, and, and it's just in your writing, so you can write your own shorthand or big long message to yourself, whatever it might be, but if it's in one place and every time you think of something, you just go to that, add to it, yeah, it's a good thing. Um, and have a project or outcome in mind. Um, if, if you go to a course and you learn Microsoft Word and you have a six hour session and you're bombarded <laughs> with all this information and they give you these um, little exercises on do this, do this, do this, do this. It's great and it teaches you the functions of things and it, you will learn quite a few things. But if you are doing our example, if you've decided I am going to write my family history and I am going to learn how to do a word processing program to do that. Everything you do will be about your book and it, or about your story and it will have so much more meaning to you mm -hmm. that if you're doing something real than if you're just doing practice exercises. So that's, yeah, I, I think that's important to, if you, or have an outcome in mind, say just surfing around the internet trying to find things, okay, I think I might go for a holiday next year, I will explore where I might go, mm -hmm. do some research. And if everything you're doing is has an outcome in mind, we find out more about where I might travel to, um, it does, it gives much more meaning and, and you'll remember and learn a lot more that way. Mm -hmm. My last tip is um, nearly every computer has internet security. Not everybody has it activated, especially if it's a free one. So if you don't know how to do this, ask somebody who does know or email me or something, but um, just make sure you have internet security and if you do, please make sure that it's actually working. And then when you do go onto the internet and you're surfing, um, you'll, be, you'll be protected from the nasties that, that are out there and then you just experience all the good side of technology. I think that's it. That's my Very, last tip for that. No, that's okay. awesome. So let's, we'll kind of wrap up here now. I know you have uh, some things that you want to share and your contact information here and let's go through that real quick. Oh, okay. Um, yes, we do have a, a CD. It was an interview I did with John who's the trainer up here in the, um, does all the Bayside area and it was just, it's a very it's like there's just a conversation about really why you don't need to be afraid of your computer. It's about um, 30 minutes long. So if anybody would like a, a copy of that, um, call me or email me and I'll, I'll send you that. Or for those who do know how to, I can, I can send you an MP3 of that. Um, the personal um, in-home uh, computer coaching sessions, you, you ring me to book one of those, we have a chat first and just make sure we're a good fit and if so then we join a, um, a book a session or two, which are however many sessions you need, but we start off with one. And um, then the details of our, our membership site. Now if you're not sure you can just sign up for our newsletter. Um, there's a, if you go to our website, which is down on the bottom line, www.thewebonwheels.com.au, there's a box there where you can simply put in your name and email address and then you'll need to click one more um, confirmation and then I will be able to start sending you newsletters. Um, or you can join our group which is sort of one step up from that and you get members can chat with each other, we have tips and hints and um, our members programs which are uh, starting now and there's all sorts of how-to videos and all sorts of members information there so um, there's free and paid membership so if you can give me a call or send me an email I'll give you more details or you can just go to the website because everything is there but if you're new to computers that might be a bit, bit of a, a hassle so you can just call me. And I would say if you like any family members that, you know, are a little bit older and maybe they are a little bit more fearful of, of being able to get online, as you can tell during this time that we've been together, they've just really goes through everything very slowly, 
you know, it helps them understand really what it is to kind of learn the technology step by step. There's no, I know by the time you get done with them, they, they, they know everything they need to know. They just need to keep, it, keep doing it because as we know, when you don't use it, you kind of lose it. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. And that's why that little book, that little, you know, going back and kind of ticking things back off the successes, because you probably will encounter a few, you know, areas that you're not too familiar with, but you realize you've already learned it before. So, but I know you have just a tremendous service, and that is why I was just so thrilled to feature you and be able to share you and your business with, with our community. And I know right now we have uh, several uh, women from your neck of the woods there in Australia. So welcome to everyone there in Australia, as well as I know we have some on the, in the UK on with us as well. So again, remember, this is not just local to Australia. If you do feel that this is a good fit for someone you know, or maybe yourself, make sure you get in touch with them right away and set up the, you know, your personal one-on-one -on -one coaching session and really see if it's a fit for you. But Viv, I just want to commend you for what it is that you do. I, you are really helping people really gain their independence. And that's something that shouldn't be taken lightly. Like I said before, when we started, when I learned what it is that you were doing, I, I, I had goosebumps. I thought, this is an amazing <laughs> gift. I really believe that, that is, that's what this is for you. It's a gift that you're giving them. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you so much. And you're a gift. Yeah. You just, I, just, I love working with you, and you just have such a wonderful disposition. And I know that your business is driven from the heart, and you're so passionate about what it is that you do. So wrapping up, is there any last-minute words you want to share with everybody before I let you go? Oh, um, I think I've talked myself out. <laughs> just, yeah, if you do know somebody who needs a hand, just ask and just uh, say, it does get better. Don't hurl the computer out of the window because it really can be such a great, uh, it can be a friend in the end and you don't need to be stuck in front of it for hours and hours. Just use it as a tool and as a means to keep in contact with people and uh, yeah, and I'm here for the people who need me. I'm just call or email and um, we'll work something out if you need a hand. Fantastic. Thanks, Dana. Thank you again. Thanks for everyone who took their time to attend. Those of you that are in Australia and overseas, have a fantastic rest of your day. And those of you here in the U.S., have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thanks again, Viv. Everyone take care. Bye for now. Thanks. Bye, everybody.